right? You can see it on full screen. Okay, so yeah, we're also recording in my channel, so everything is a okay. Now, today's topics will be hopefully we can finish this because there's a, uh, I think 500 slides in this particular <laughs> presentation, but yeah, we're going to we're going to talk about the bacterial uh, basics of bacteria, uh, nutritional requirements, uh, culture media testing, as well as susceptibility testing, infection control and specimen handling. Basically everything that your um, bacteriology teacher or professor has taught you in 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 preliminaries okay so we're gonna try and talk about it in a four-hour session as fast as I can again the same format I chronologically arranged a set of flash cards and and in a way that it is much more understandable by by the whole class and again for those people who are auditory learners we have the lectures on record again all right uh, we have the on our on my channel dedicated on my playlist dedicated for you guys because i love you guys so much all right now we're going to talk about the bacteriology basics again this is just a fancy term for our for general terminology and uh, things that would include that would be that would be included in your preliminaries preliminary exams or whatever okay so what are the functions of the bacterial cell wall well a bacterial cell wall of course is is going to protect the bacteria from uh, it protects the bacterial internal structure rather and it also provides the shape for the bacteria now Anybody in the class can tell me what are the shapes the back, uh, a bacterial cell can be seen as. Anybody in the chat? This is common. So sorry, sir, late po. It's okay. Si sir Marco naman ang nag-check ng attendance. So coxa is okay. Yeah, caucus is the plural form. Might we can accept that? Caucus bacillus. We're missing one more. We're missing one more. What is the other one? The last one. The last shape that we're looking at. Um, I'll give you guys a clue so that you guys don't have to think too much. The last one is the one that is prevalent. The shape of this bacteria is usually the type of bacteria that you might isolate from a patient who likes to walk on plants. <laughs> Spiral key. All right, wonderful. Vibrio, comma shape, they fall under the end. They fall under the bacilli. Okay, but thank you for participating, Mayor. That means so much to me that you're participating today. Now, let's move on to another splash card. So, these are the functions of a bacterial cell wall it protects the internal structure of bacteria, it provides the shape for bacteria. All right. So examples of the component of the bacterial cell wall that may be responsible for the pathogenicity. Now, once we talk about the cell wall, it also has some sort of um, pathological, uh, patholo it has some sort of pathogenic pathogenetic factors in it. An example of that is what you call M protein. And another one is mycolic acid, which is usually found in, in different species of organism. But in this particular lecture, especially for those that we provide uh, especially for board exam takers like you these are just we call questions i know you guys have already tackled this in your um, in your third year third year classes but for the purpose of this lecture i've already summarized it for you in a condensed way so m protein is found for step in streptococcus my my pyogenes and it prevents bacterial phagocytosis mycolic acid is found in mycobacterial cell walls it prevents intracellular digestion and actually in some books sulfonamides prevent the entry of um, the mycolic acid actually neutralizes sulfonamide in some books okay now which pc of bacteria lacks a cell wall and structure lacks the cell wall structure or a uh, a cell wall in its cytology there are two organisms please don't forget them the mycoplasma and the ureoplasma species are the ones that have, a, that lack rather, a cell wall. 
And because of this, the absence, these organisms are usually termed as pleomorphic organisms, which means they vary in shape. All right, pleomorphism. You might find this in several in different terminologies. It just means that the the shape of the organism or anything that we're talking about when it comes to pleomorphism is malleable. It depends on how it was fixed on a slide. So hence the term pleomorphism. All right. So anything that varies in shape, and in this case, the shape of the organism is is known as pleomorphic. All right. Pleomorphic, pleomorphism, uh, suffix and a prefix. That's the that's the key word. That's the thing that you need to remember. All right. Now, what is the main constituent of a bacterial cell wall? Well, please don't forget that. Uh, bacterial cell wall are different from fungal cell wall and fungal capsids. We've talked about this. And for fungus, for fungus, it has shite in, in the cell wall of bacteria. They have what you call peptidoglycan. And they, uh, the usual constituents of the peptidoglycan is actually N-acetyl glucosamine and N-acetyl muramic acid. Please don't forget the slide number four i want you guys to put a star on that one or highlight it or or whatever you will need to do because this is a commonly asked question in most exams so even even in the board exams they usually ask this and it's oftentimes the basics that uh, students often forget so uh, among the most basic things in microbiology that you're going to encounter in your whole career as medical technologists, uh, number four would probably be the most uh, mo mo most um, yeah, most basic, if not the most simplest the thing that they will ask you. All right? So please don't forget this one. It's the peptidoglycan layer is composed of N-acetyl glucosamine and N-acetyl muramic acid. All right. Now, now we want to use a differential test for this one. Now, what are the, what's the test that we use for this one? Without looking at the next slide, anybody in the chat? Yes. Really? Ay, ganon, sir. Oo nga, no, nagpinag-comment, sir. Thank you, for, thank you for interrupting me. Don't worry about it. Let me check if my microphone is... Hello. Ayan. Okay na. Hello, hello. Hindi pa rin or okay na. Hi, my name is Yan, gaganyan ako. Ganyan. Hi, my name is Manuel. I will be your lecturer for today. Oh, di ba? <laughs> okay na, sir. <laughs> Thank you for the interruptions. Thank you, thank you. Okay, so because uh, we want to have the best um, audio experience for our students, sir. But thank you, yeah. All right. So let's try to use the. Uh, let's try to remember this one. It's another basic. Uh, it's another basic test that you will encounter for your whole career as medical technologists, even as you exit the halls of Capital Medical. What is the differentiating test? or the test that you that is used to differentiate bacteria based on the components of their cell wall. Francis, oh welcome back. This is the first time I've seen you. Hi. Yeah, I know I remember you. Yeah. Yeah, wonderful. Now because you were absent yesterday, I don't know what's the problem why you were absent yesterday. I'd like you to answer the second bullet. Now try your best answering without looking at the next slide, all right? Okay, so what are the compo what are the reagents that we use? I love I want it in chronological order as well, okay? Okay, go. Sige lang. Yun na, yun na, yun na. Wala na tayo. Alright. 
<laughs> you what that's what you remember all right what about the others please help help francis answer the ne the rest of the question of my uh, my question who raised this hand i didn't see that oh no. my gosh i was too fast adrian Which is what? That's the part. Uh huh. Okay, next. All right. Uh huh. Last one. Saffron. Okay. Okay, wonderful. Wonderful. Okay, so did you try that without looking at the other slide? Did you try to challenge yourself? Hopefully you did. Yeah, hopefully you did. But because if you did, that would be, again, another... You will put another star on this one. Because, again, this is one of the most basic questions that they might ask you in the exam. All right? And, again, a lot of students often forget the most complicated... Uh, often forget that the most simpler... The most simple uh, questions when they are taking their exams. Actually, I have, I have several... Uh, I have experienced a couple of students who... Who were uh, who were shocked when I asked questions about gram stains when I was making exams for them? I said uh, they, they said, sir, you have a lot of questions to ask about the about other organisms. Let me remind you guys that the uh, that the exam that you are about to take is more or less tailored to what you're going to do when you graduate. So. It's not really more about case presentations, but rather what we do in the laboratory. So if you guys still, if you guys remember the basics, you might get at least almost a passing ex a passing grade in your board exams. These are again a must know. I want you guys to remember or put a star on on flashcard number five because it's a must know. Okay. All right. So they answered it correctly. So gram staining, okay. Uh, I want you guys to be specific. Uh, I want you guys to be specific. Ninety-five percent ethyl ethyl alcohol or what you call acetone alcohol. All right. Now the reaction of gram stain positive organism and a gram stain negative organism, or what we call just, or in simpler terms we call it gram positive or gram negative. Violet for violet to purple for gram positive, and then pink. To red for gram negative basics yes understood easy easy peasy okay so we're not gonna dwell on that a little bit longer now what is the most common method of fixating specimen in a glass slide for gram staining well we can use two methods actually the most common one is just heat fixation and the other one if you are if you are in a more uh, in a more more affluent laboratory you could use slide warmers yes they have slide warmers also actually when i was working in the philippines we have a slide warmer the slide warmer is actually the oven that we used to that we used to uh, that we used to clean uh, that we used to dry our test tubes diba kanya kanyang resourcefulness lang yan guys all right in this case, we have a slide warmer. We imagine it as a slide warmer because it's warm. The inside is warm, not enough, not so much that it will break down the organisms in the, in the, in the slide, but but just, but just that's just perfect enough for the the cells to be fixated. All right. Now the most critical step in gram staining. This is going to be another important question because it was asked in in my board exam. All right. Without trying to look at the slide, anybody can answer this for me. There are four steps: primary staining, more than addition, decolorization, and secondary staining. Which of those four would, do you think is the most critical? All right, somebody immediate. Oh, nagunahan sila oh. Thank you so much, Cesar, for oh, this is the first time I've heard your voice, Cesar. But yeah, thank you. Yes. Why are you sorry? You said the correct answer. I like that. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Raniel, also, but it was a little bit too late for me. <laughs> so I would give the credit to Cesar. <laughs> thank you. So called decolorization or decolorizing. 
the slide is actually the most critical step. So again, another star on this one or highlight this one or bookmark this one or even print screen this, this particular slide. I don't care, but I want you guys to remember this one. Okay. Now, the component, this is the component of the cell wall that binds to magnesium. So we're going now to the physiology of bacteria. It is the tychoic acid. All right, tychoic acid or tychoic acid rather, not tychoic. Tychoic acid is different, just tychoic acid. Okay, component of the cell wall that binds to magnesium. Why does it need magnesium? Well, similar to our cells, it requires electrolytes. And in this, form, in this particular case, magnesium is important for some of the metabolic, uh, metabolic processes that occurs inside the cell or inside the bacterial cell. Now, the structure of gram-negative bacteria is different because of what? What is the most important thing that is different from them? The cell wall is composed of lipopolysaccharide bilayer. And the other name for that one is we have O antigen, core antigen, or the lipid A endotoxin. Just for your information, guys, the reason why we call it an endotoxin, the reason why we have different, uh, different, uh, what do you call this? Um, different toxins that are produced by bacteria uh, the most common reason why there are there are certain pathologic uh, pathologic conditions caused by gram negative bacteria is because of the the lipid polysaccharide bilayer it's actually also a toxic uh, a toxic substance that can cause certain disorders specifically when we're talking about intestinal disorders We'll talk about that later when we go to the specific microorganisms. Um, yeah, specific bacterial organisms. All right. Now, what differs from what's uh, the structures that are different in gram positive is that is that they have tychoic acid and lipotychoic acid. So please don't forget that this is different. Tychoic acid is different. Component of the cell wall. In general, both of them have it, but in the case of gram-positive bacteria, they have tachoic acid and lipotechoic acid. They do not have lipopolysaccharide layer. So what? Uh, how would they ask this in the board in the board exam? They're going to ask it in such a manner. All of the following is present in a gram-negative bacteria, except for what? They will add things that are present in gram-positive that is not present in gram-negative. So please don't forget that one, okay? Structures that are present in gram-positive bacteria that is absent in gram-negative bacteria. I want to clear this out so that um, gram-negative do, do, does, does not have the following. So it's not confusing for you guys. All right. Now, let's move on again. Is sound okay? Sound and everything is okay? Anybody? Uh, can anybody just... All right. Wonderful, wonderful. Okay. So please... Don't hesitate to interrupt me whilst I'm whilst I'm on the lecture because we want you guys to have the best auditory experience. Charing, charing, charing la. All cocci are gram positive except for um. Uh, this is a, this is basically a shortcut, uh, guys. You're usually going. There's a lot of uh, of course gram positive organisms, but gram positive cocci organisms, but. But guys, please don't forget that we are talking about medical microbiology, all right? So this is just a shortcut that has often been passed down from generations to generations of medical technologists taking the board exam. And uh, I, for one, have actually been have actually been using it. I'm not going to lie. And a lot of the questions, they would often provide you guys with the three ones that, are we, that we're going to discuss also in subsequent lectures so all three all cocci are gram positive oxide cocci that we will discuss are except for nyseria branhamella formerly known uh, commonly known now as moraxella and we have what you call villonella all right villonella it exhibits red fluorescence just for your information which of the three exhibits red fluorescence when exposed to uv light Villionella, okay, specifically Villionella parvula. All right, Villionella parvula. All right, examples of gram negative positive, uh, gram positive rather, 
Mycococci that are aerobes. Well, we're going to talk about Mycococcus, Staphylococcus, Streptococcus, and gram-positive cocci and aerobes. We have Peptostreptococcus, 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 guys, number one. Peptococcus, number two, and the Sarcina species. All right, Mycococcus species, gram-positive aero, gram-positive cocci aerobes, Mycococcus, Mycococcus species, Staphylococcus species, Streptococcus, and then for anaerobes, gram-positive cocci, Peptococcus, Peptostreptococcus, and the Sarcina species. Are they medically important? Yes, of course. Why? We will talk about it later. You will find out why these three. Actually, Micrococcus is considered as a contaminant, but we'll talk about it later once we once we once we reach the discussion on gram-positive cocci. You'll know why. Now, all bacilli. Now we're ha we have we have guys. We have eleven of we we have eleven organisms that were all all bacilli are gram negative except for 11 there's 11 bacilli huh there's 11 you have to remember the 11 ones because this will be the ones that we will be talking about the rest of our discussion okay so all bacilli are gram negative except for actinomyces clostridium and proteonibacterium acnes all right these are these are Gram positive organism, gram negative organism. Sorry, ah yeah, gram positive organism. So all bacilli are gram negative except for these eleven. Anaerobes. We'll start with anaerobes. Actinomyces, Clostridium, Propionibacterium. Aerobes. We have Bacillus, Corynebacterium, Erythropelothrix, Listeria, Lactobacillus, Mycobacterium, Nocardia, and Furtia rothia. I know there's a lot of things to remember, but I want you guys to be acquainted which one of them is aerobes and which one of them is anaerobes. So out of the 11, the anaerobes, we will only discuss three, actinomyces, clostridium, and propionibacterium. Okay? Now, you might notice that I've arranged them according to letter. See? That's why I love you guys so much. I have arranged them in according to letters B C E B C E L L L M N R, right? I don't know if we, you can use it as a mnemonic, but I provided the, I provided the necessary arrangements for you guys. A P I C R, o di ba? Bait bait naman. Pero pinapahirapan mo pa rin kami sir. Meron na ngang 500. Meron na ngang 500 plus slides para sa virology, tapos another 400 for mycology, and then we have another one, which is just the just the general topics on microbiology, uh, bacteriology. Tapos ngayon, sabihin mo, mahal mo kami. Hindi. <laughs> Hindi mo kami mahal. Ganon. Don't worry. I love you guys. If I didn't love you guys, I would have not thought, I would not have arranged it for you guys. Alright? Now, Examples of fungus-like bacteria. Without looking at the slides, guys, we discussed it last week when we were just talking about bacteria. Without looking at the next slide, examples of fungus-like bacteria. All right, Francis, try your best. Wonderful. Thank you, Francis. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Ay, may nagturo kay Francis na <laughs> namamas ko po. Mamaya pa yun, nag-umpisa pa lang tayo. Na sa 14, pa, na, 14 slides pa lang tayo. Active talaga sila, no, Sir Marco. <laughs> Active talaga sila kapag ka may mga monetary, ano. <laughs> Adrian, sabi mo eh. <laughs> diba? I love it. I love the. I love the. Uh, but nobody sent me their. Uh, nobody emailed me their um, phone numbers yesterday. I was actually waiting for the. You can email me in this. Um, it's not gonna be seen in the live stream, no man. So it's okay. Uh, third, one six four. Uh, yeah. 
Okay, there's three ladies there who passed the who got prizes, and I was waiting for them. I was waiting for them to send the numbers yesterday, but apparently they didn't know the number, my my email address. So for those three people who won yesterday, you can email me your numbers, and you'll receive fifty percent. Ah, uh, fifty percent to like fifty pesos. Uh, Gcash because of your efforts for from yesterday's lecture. All right, now let's move on to uh, yeah. Uh, Francis already answered this one. Nocardia and actinomyces. Can you give me a specific organism for actinomyces and nocardia? Because these are the only ones that we're going to talk about in subsequent lectures. Give me a specific organism. Anybody? Actinomyces blank. Nocardia blank. These are the organisms that we're going to talk about. Anybody in the group chat? Or you can unmute yourself selves and tell me what's uh, tell me what you tell me what you remember. Nobody? Nobody? Alright. We're gonna talk about Oh no. That one is for advanced microbiology students. That's too much. Advanced kamag isip ah. Advanced kamag isip Adrian. Ang pag-uusapan lang natin is Actinomyces israeli and oh, di ba viscosus? Di ba sir? Ano yan? Pang master's master's class actually yan eh. Yeah. We're going to the, we're just going to start with the what they ask in board exams guys. Um, Actinomyces israeli lang tayo ha. Yung viscosus na yan medyo advanced na yan kasi it's going to fall under fall under fungus like bacteria blah 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 and it's usually taken in the taken in the i think second semester of second semester of advanced microbiology in i think UP <laughs> UP Diliwan I saw the I saw the syllabus actually and it was oh wow there's a lot more <laughs> so be mindful uh, be mindful of the ones that we're going to ask at Irovisis Israeli and Nocardia what Nocardia Asteroides, all right? Nocardia asteroides. So please don't include that in your please don't include that in your board review because in the board exam they will only ask you several things. All right. Now examples of spirochetes that we're going to talk about. Oh, I've already provided the mnemonic TBL. Tabilang. Oh, di ba? Tabilang. All right, Adrian, try to redeem yourself from being so advanced. <laughs> What are the examples of spirochetes that we're going to talk about in medical bi microbiology for you guys? What's the other one? B? All right. Wonderful. You actually answered correctly for all of them. All right. So the special term used for their flagella is different. They have what you call a... I'm sorry. <coughs> Nakikita nyo pa yung screen ko? Nakikita nyo, no? Yeah. Alright. So, they have what you call a periplasmic flagella or what you call axial filaments. Alright? Periplasmic flagella or axial filaments. Okay? So, that is the term used for their flagella. Now, let's move on to... Oh, sorry. Sorry. So the correct ones are the three ones that the three species of of spirochetes that we're going to talk about is Triponema, Borrelia, and Leptospira. All right, Bore. Ang arte no, bakit ang arte ng pagbig pagbig ni sir? Eh, kasi yung mga lecture na pinapakinggan ko, ganyan sila magsalita. So ginagaya ko lang. Borrelia burgdorferi, Triponema pallidum, Leptospira interrogans. O di ba? Ang arte arte magsalita ni sir. Eh syempre yun yung nagturo sa akin. Eh, kung sino-sino yung mga nagturo sa akin sa mga online na mga lecture na pinag pina, pinakikinggan ko eh. So Again, it doesn't matter if you how you pronounce it doesn't matter how you pronounce the organism as long as you answer the correct one in your board exam. All right? All right, it is known as the spirochetes, the spirochete that generally cannot be stained. It's known that spirochetes cannot generally stain. However, some of them exhibit a gram reaction. Okay? Spirochetes have what type of gram reaction? Without trying to look at the slide, what are they? Gram-positive or gram-negative? 
May nagsabi ng sir, sir, sir. Joanna, oh, bakit ka nag sir, sir? Ano ta, ako tuloy ako. Baka nanghihingi ng ano. Nanghihingi ng, nanghihingi ng, ano, ng tulong. Oo, ano, nabubulunan, nabubulunan po yung audio ninyo kanina. Nabulunan ka, girl, para sa akin. <laughs> Naloka ako. Akala ko kung anong klaseng tulong ang kailangan ni Joanna. <laughs> All right. All right, so it's known as this, uh, it's known that spirochetes cannot be stained. However, based on the composition of their cell walls, they are gram negative. Correct. Somebody answered correctly. Who was that? Mayra. AJ Aquino. I haven't heard AJ's voice. Hopefully, later on in the discussion, I will hear her voice because maybe later I will ask another prized question. All right. Given that, given the term, the term given for gram stain reaction for mycobacteria. Now again, ch try to challenge yourself, guys. Try to challenge yourself. What is the term given to a gram stain reaction of, or to the gram stain reaction of mycobacteria? Anybody? Gram what? Gram. 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 Gram negative? No. Try to challenge yourself. Huh? Try not to. Try to resist the urge to look at the next slide. It's actually gram ghost. Hindi ko, hindi ko alam kung hindi ko alam kung nagmumura siya. So, let's try to bleep that out. Ha, may, nagulat ako eh. Hindi ko alam kung nagmumura siya. <laughs> Kasi putol-putol yung lumabas sa akin. So, medyo i-sensor natin yung tut tut Ganon. So, the term given for mycobacteria, that uh, for the gram stain reaction of mycobacteria, is actually gram ghost. Alright? Gram ghost. Or what you call or what you call gram neutral. Uh, gram ghost is the most common one that they usually ask in exams. All right. Now let's move on to um, mycobacteria. Um, let's move on to mycobacteria. Uh, in this case, we're going to talk about acid fastness, the ability of an organism to resist resist uh, resist uh, counter staining with uh, carbolfushin. Or with an acid acid decolorizer. So mycobacteria, organisms that are considered to that are considered to be uh, uh, <clears throat> sorry acid acid fast or partially acid fast. We have three again. This is Rhodococcus, Nocardia, and Legionella mictidae. All right. So please don't forget them. Now, if some of you have already if some of you have already remember, if some of you can remember, Nocardia is one of the organisms that are fungi-like. Okay, there are fungus, uh, somewhat like a fungus, because of the growth patterns. All right, Rhodococcus is new to you guys, I suppose, and Legionella mictidae is an organism that is usually stained in, uh, usually stained, and it looks acid fast. It looks acid fast, but it's actually a gram-negative organism as well. All right, we'll talk about Legionella later, specifically Legionella pneumophilia, positive agent of what? Positive agent of Baltimore's pneumonia, blah, 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 a lot of things, a lot of uh, Legionnaire's disease. So we'll talk about them later on. Now, parasites that are known to be acid fast. Grabe naman to si sir, naki-entrada naki, naki pa sa parasitology. Well, parasites can also be stained in an acid fast state. And I want you guys to remember about isospora belly and cryptosporidium. Ay, sino na pa lang isospora lang? Pero that's okay. You can still remember, uh, hopefully, hopefully you, can still, you can still remember isospora and cryptosporidium. Cryptosporidium parvum and isospora belly. Alright? Ang cute ng name ni Isospora, no? Isospora belly. Alright, now, gram-negative bacilli, all gram-negative bacilli are aerobes except for two organisms. Please don't forget about Fusobacterium and Bacteroides, alright? We will talk about them later. And actually, in the laboratory, you cannot encounter this. In, it's difficult for the, I've never actually encountered it in the laboratory, even though we have, uh, even though we have, anaerobic um anaerobic uh, anaerobic an anaerobic system on the um diagnosing these organisms i've never really encountered them i've only encountered them in 
external quality control uh, samples. The ones that the, I think it's similar to I think it's similar to the ones that are that are sent by I'm not, I'm not sure if it's sent by the research institute of tropical medicine or or um, uh, what's the other one um, what's the other hospital there in the philippines it's located in near circle um, east avenue east west east west ano yon banko yon east west <laughs> Bangko yon yung East West Bank nakakaloka ka nakakaloka ka <laughs> Basta malapit lang yon sa kap Ah yeah NKTI yeah NKTI I know I think they're both for clinical chemistry no clinical chemistry silang center tapos si NKTI si I know but that's for your MTL class but uh, for microbiology it's either San Lazaro or somewhere there in uh, somewhere there in circle i'm not sure i'm not sure anymore because it's been a long time since i've been in I've, i've been working in the philippines but they usually send it to but they usually send it to us uh when i was working in the philippines and that's the only time i got to encounter these two organisms uh, uh these two species of uh, these two genera rather of organisms and it's actually acceptable to release fusobacterium species you don't have to you don't have to be specific on the species you don't, you don't have to be specific on the species level you can give the genera okay it's actually acceptable why is that because external quality control would just want you guys to provide information that is correct on the species level because on a clinical basis they will only give the same as the same uh, regardless of the species of the bacteria they will give the same antibiotic to the patient so That's the reason why you can you can give a satisfactory result, get a satisfactory result in external quality control when you just answer on the genera level. So don't worry about it. Okay? So genera level, yun yung first name nila. Yung second name, for example, genera. I'll give you guys an example. Genera, Escherichia coli. Escherichia. The species is coli. O, di ba? Para hindi kayo malito dun sa mga ano, terminology sa ginagam. Sir, grabe ka naman. Meron ka pa mga ano, Latin terms. Don't worry about it. I will try to help you out as much as I can. I will hold your hand. Kumbaga. What? Char! Alright. What are the two types of AFP staining? Ah, we have... This is again... An, you have to put a star on this one, guys. Because again, this is a must know. A must know. Um, <clears throat> a must know information. You must know this. Otherwise, I would rather you you stay put and go back to school before taking the or take a refresher on microbiology before you take the board you take the board exam. Because if you don't know this, I doubt you would be able to answer some of the questions in the board exam. Because again, this is basic. Usually ask probably 80% of the time. And the answers uh, and the answer to this question is there's two: the hot method and the cold method. Hot method is known as your Zill-Nielsen method. The, uh, the other one, the cold method, is known as the Quignon method. Quignon method. All right? Wonderful? Easy peasy? Please put a star on this one. These are basic questions that are asked 80% of the time. I would say 80% of the time. Even in question banks for ASCP examinations, they will ask this um, as part of their... Uh, as part of... Uh, especially if the examinee is taking uh, is making a lot of mistakes they will give this one as sort of like a way for you for the examine examinees to have uh, to have some points in the exam remember in the ACPI examination the more the algorithm of the exam is that the more you answer correctly the harder the questions get so so that's uh, that's the that's the way the the exam is programmed Okay. So if you don't know the basics, might as well might as well take a rip. might as well go back to this lecture and then we'll try and then we'll try again. All right. Now, what is the mordant or intensifier intensifier technique used? Intensifier ang arte no, but I have to I have to use different terms because in some books there's the, there's mordant and then the other one is intensifying technique. So what uh, int intensifying techniques are used in each type of AFB staining? Well, the stain itself is uh, steam itself is used 
for zeal nielsen but continue on we use a chemical known as ter tergitol all right tergitol 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 doesn't matter as long as you spell it or remember the correct answer when it's asked in your exam all right so zeal nielsen uses steam hence the term a uh, hot method continue on it since it's the cold method you have to use tergitol all right now what is the decolorizer used for afb afb staining afb staining I want the complete answer. Try to resist the urge to answer this next slide. I try to resist the urge to get to, to, get, to, get to the next slide. I'll try to call out somebody else. Um, Joanna, because you've been very active in the been very active in the slide in the chat. What is the decolorizer used for AFB staining? Joanna. Try to resist the urge. Challenge yourself. Joanna is not here. Alright. Wonderful. Okay, we'll try again with another person. Rainiel, wag ka muna. Baka sabihin ng mga tao, baka sabihin ng mga tao, may favoritism ako sa mga boys. No. We are, we are, you know, we are impartial here in the, here in this lecture. Baka sabihin nila, meron akong ano, meron akong favoritism. So we'll go with another girl. What about Noreen Fortunato, who was our first winner from yesterday's challenge? Noreen. What? Um, okay. Thank you. That's okay. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. But I want you guys to be specific. What specific acid alcohol are we going to use? Thank you so much. But your answer was correct. It was satisfactory. It wasn't it wasn't bad. It wasn't it wasn't excellent. It was satisfactory. The correct answer is actually <clears throat> the correct answer is three percent acid alcohol. Specifically hydrochloric acid is added. Uh, this is the formula that we use in the laboratory. I added, I actually used the ones when I was an in. This was created when I was an intern, so I I added it here so as not to confuse myself. <laughs> All right, I still remember the days when I was an intern. Ah, that was such a long time ago. I guess it was a decade ago, right? It's 2021. Yeah, it was a decade ago when I was a. When I was an intern. Oh my gosh, how time flies. How old does it serve? Alright, so what is the most commonly used counter stain for AFB? Now, it depends on the manufacturer or the method that you're using. But there are only two that There's only two stains that you can use. Uh, counter stains that you can use. It's either methylene blue or malachite green. But most manufacturers, they will give us methylene blue why because malachite green is harder to is usually uh, sold in um, in european countries well, most of the providers are from are from um, uh, from america and sometimes even in china so malachite green is commonly seen in european countries so if you look if you see a if you see in if you took the if you took the ACT exam and you see green and then the question is, what is what organism or rate this particular? What is the what is the staining reaction of the organism? And you saw, oh my gosh, it's it's green. Why is that green? Well, maybe that was stained with malachite. Well, maybe the 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 slide was stained with malachite green. All right. So please don't forget that one because you can only see th several things in. The ASCP exam, even in the question banks that they gave us after before the exam. Usually, there's only three background colors that you will see. It's either pink, blue, or green for gram stain color, for uh, staining colors. And if you see green, as you always assume that the stain was, uh, that the AFB stain was stained with malachite green. So don't forget that one. All right? Now, let's move on. Another acid that may be used as a decolorizer. You can actually use sulfuric acid. Yes, you can use sulfuric acid, and this is a modification of of your AFB staining. It is the the purpose of of using uh, the purpose of using this kind of decolorizer is we want to use, we want to demonstrate partially acid fast organisms, and one of the examples is actually Nocardia. So par parang favorite ni fa it seems like my favorite is Nocardia, no? Because when I was taking the exam, Nocardia was always there. When I when I took when I took the exam, Nocardia was always there, and I want you guys to not 
feel down when uh when I when you guys take the exam because you didn't have enough information about Nokia because when I was a student we only uh we only talked about uh Nokia for probably less than a minute when I was a student and I'm not I'm not uh saying that as a shade to my microbiology professor but I wish we would have gotten I wish we would have gotten a little bit more information about it so uh, because in my board exam I was a, a little bit disappointed that I didn't know anything about it right okay now ideal smear size for AFD staining supposed to be thumb size or 2 by 3 centimeters 2 by 3 centimeters thumb size or 2 by 3 centimeters um, it actually has been changed when I came back to the Philippines. I cha I trained with TD dots before. Um, they said that they said the thumb size is no longer the ideal one. They said it's a big thumb size. Uh, but again, the dimensions is like this. So in the in the, the theoretically, the dimensions is supposed to be two by two by three centimeters. All right. Now. What is the function of the polysaccharide component? We're gonna go back to the bacterial physiology because we we talked about the stains, so we're going back to bacterial physiology. Uh, what is the function of the polysaccharide component of a bacterial cell? Well, it inhibits phagocytosis. Actually, there are polys there are, there's only a couple of organisms with the bacterial uh, polysaccharide components, which is basically known as a capsule, and these are the organisms that you might encounter. All right. Haemophilus influenzae, Neisseria meningitis, and Streptococcus pneumoniae. All right. So another name for the polysaccharide component of the bacterial cell wall is capsule. All right, guys. Please don't forget those bacterial. Bac the, please don't forget that bacteria. All right. Review question from last week. Which fungi has a polysaccharide component? which is the causative agent of fungal meningitis. Anybody from the chat? From last week's lecture. Do you guys still remember? That's a must-know question. Remember, I, rem I asked you guys to put a star on that one. Anybody? We're talking about a fun fungi. 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 Anybody? Anybody can remember? Give you guys. Um, I'll give you guys choices. All right. I'll type it in the screen uh, in the chat box. A. H. Capsulato. B. C. Neoformans. D. A C. Oh, ba C. Um, ano nga yung isa? Para coccidioides Brazil, Brazil, Brazilian, Brazilian, sis. D. Malasizia furfur. Malasizia furfur. Alright? So these are your choices. Histoplasma capsulatum, Cryptococcus neoformans, Paracoxidioides brasiliensis, and <coughs> Malasizia furfur. Huh? Gagalit is Sir Marco. Kasi it's a must know. Alright. A lot of students have answered correctly, actually. Very good. Very good. Gagalit si Sir Marco. Nako. Nako. Nagigigil si Sir Marco sa inyo. <laughs> because it's a must know, sir. Walang capsule, di ba? Pinangalanan lang nila. Actually, thank you so much for saying that, Sir Marco. Because this is actually one way of me one way of me to check if the students were actually listening to me. <laughs> it's also a board exam question. Yeah, it's also a board exam question. This is also, it's a board exam question. So again, please guys, if they're going to ask something from mycology, this would probably be the one. So please, don't forget, nagagalit Sir Marco sa inyo na, nako, patay, patay tayo dyan. Parang, Parang hindi parang ayaw mo nang ilagay Sir Marco no. Parang hindi mo na ilalagay sa exam mo kasi inaalala na nila. <laughs> so mawawalan sila ng one point. <laughs> parang uh, Oo, oh, oh, wag mo nang ilagay sa ano kasi nakakagigil 'tong mga 'to, nakalimutan nila. Yun. It's a board exam question. 
<laughs> All right. We'll take note of that po, sir. Okay. Wonderful. So, kaya ako pinaalala sa inyo kasi nga, it's a board exam question. It's also another way for me to confuse the students into thinking that hmm, maybe they're listening to me. Kinikeme-keme lang ako ng mga studyante na to. So, yun. So, I think, kinikeme-keme lang ako ni, sino ba to? Sino ba yung sumagot ng A? Si Jimena at saka si Francis. Kinikeme-keme lang nila ako. <laughs> From last week. Pero char lang. Kaya eh, mag-alala. Hindi naman ako ganun ka-petty. Alright. Let's move on to, um, uh, the function is basically to inhibit phagocytosis. Same with that of Cryptococcus neoformans. It will inhibit the phagocytosis of the fungi. And these are the organisms which you will see that you will see it with them. There's actually a test for that one, a capsular stain. But we'll talk about that later when we talk about li laboratory diagnosis of fun microorganisms. All right. In Bacillus anthracis, what is the component of its cell wall? It actually has what you call a glutamic acid component or what you call the polypeptide D-glutamic acid. It is another, uh, another board exam question. You'll see later why it's important. Okay. Now, the site of energy production of bacteria, they don't have a mitochondria. So they have what you call the cytoplasmic membrane only. In eukaryotic cells, it's the mitochondria. Okay, so what's the difference between uh, between prokaryotic and eukaryotic? Okay, oh, hindi na to board exam question, but it is it is going to challenge you. It will if you answered incorrectly with this with my question with this question, it will be an insult to a lot of the science students right now. What is the difference? What is the gawin natin? What is the major difference between pro and eukaryotic organisms all right so before we go on break later i will i want somebody to answer that question i will post that there as a reminder for everybody to ask answer later because we're going to move on mamaya na mamaya na kayo magraise ng hand chill lang it's an answer before we go on break because it's lunchtime here in my in the country where I reside in. So, medyo bibilis-bilisan ko ng konti to at least give you guys some time to think about it. You can use you can use uh you can use Google or whatever. Okay? I won't judge. All right. What uh the <clears throat> the this is the point rather. This is the point where genetic material of bacteria, the genetic material of the bacteria is is attached, is actually known as the mesosome. Yes, there is genetic material for bacteria. There doesn't mean that they're prokaryotic. The, it, it, without the nucleus, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's no, there's nothing in, there's no genetic material. Of course there is. Please, uh, it's a it's a true or false question. I've seen in, I've seen in the uh, question banks in ASCPI. True or false. The genetic material there is there is an absence of genetic material for bacteria it's actually false even viruses lacking as they may for of um, of uh, cellular structures they still have genetic material so anything that you talk about in microbiology they will have genetic material 100 percent so the point of which the point of which where genetic material is attached is your is the is the mesosome all right so i'll edit this one because i think this was a typo this is this is the point where genetic this is the point this is the site na lang. this is the site the grammar was the, the grammar is not good <laughs> i was still an intern when when i when i created this one when i started uh when i started making these slides so Please bear with me when I was uh, when I was a young when I was still a youngster. The grammar wasn't good back then. All right. This is the site where genetic where the genetic material of bacteria of bacteria is attached. So mesosome. But don't worry, it's still relevant. I took a I took the time to to look at it for a couple of uh, a couple of days ago. A couple of days ago, I took the time to read to read some of the some of the slides and yes, they're still relevant. To now, to today's lecture, all right. So inclusion bodies that are found in medically important bacteria. Um, there's three actually. Uh, one of them is the 
much granules, all right? Much granules or the muc, muc granule, mux granules, all right? Usually seen in patients, usually seen in, usually seen in AFB stains. Another one is your spores or bipolar, and another one is bipolar bodies, all right? Babes, urns, bodies, or volatile granules. Ah, sorry, I'm talking about inclusion, inclusion bodies, not spores. So much granules seen in MTB. All right, babes, urns, or metachromatic or volatile granules. Corine bacterium, diphtheriae, and the last one is bipolar bodies seen in Yersinia pestis. Yersinia pestis. Wrong spelling. Yersinia pestis. All right. Now, um. Your senior pestis is quick question, just a review for the people here in the class. Your senior pestis is known as what? The causative agent of what? If you watch, if you if you watch the medical drama Doctor House, you will remember it. Or House F D rather. Your senior pestis. Anybody? Plague. Wonderful. Thank you. Once again, the reason why I asked it is because it was asked in the board exam. All right, it's a board exam question again. How do we stain bipolar bodies? Please don't forget that we have what you call Watson's a Watson stain, not Watson's Watson stain, and the appearance of the bipolar bodies. Usually, they would appear, they would make the organism look like a safety pin. All right. Hence the term the safety pin bacilli. All right. Safety pin. Uh, hopefully, I can draw. Uh, all right. So this is this is what it looks like on the on the gram stain. Safety pin. They look like safety pins. Uh, I didn't have the time to look at the picture. It would look like. Yeah, I know my artwork is not that good. All right. So staining methods that may be used to demonstrate volatile granules. This isn't an, uh, it's an uncommon question to ask, but I put it there for you guys just so you can you have you have information about staining of the much uh, of the volatile granules. Volatile granules, also known as Babes Ernst granules, also known as also known as what metachromatic granules. Yes, they have metachromatic granules as well in in bacteriology, but not many students know this and this could be to, this can be stained using the lamps method or Burke's method and the stain that we use it the, the stain that we use is methylene blue all right on both methods I'm not gonna I'm not gonna focus more on what the method looks like uh, what the method looks like because this is more on this is more uh, the discussion is tailored more on what questions are going to be asked in the board exam, as well as providing you guys with a gener general review of a uh, chronologically uh, arranged general review of microbiology one or bacteriology. All right, so now this is the structure that is found in some bacteria that is considered as a resting cell. Ah, yeah, now I've, I've mentioned it earlier, I made it slip, but uh, what is the answer to number 34? Number 34. Anybody on the chat? This is the structure that is found in bacteria that is considered as a resting cell. All right. Somebody already answered. Mera, Mera, Mera and Adrian answered. Angel. All right. I love the name Angel. AJ Aquino also answered Spore. Francis Alipio wanted to flex his wanted to flex his back microbiology language. He said endospore. I would still accept that. Yes, that is correct. Correct. Oh, game show, a game show. Correct. Endospore, and the component of that spore is diplonic, uh, dipylocolonic, uh, cholinic acid, dipylocholinic acid. All right. Or calcium di dipycholinate. Just to be, just just to be clear. All right. So they might the, some books they say calcium dipycholinate, and in some books it's dipycholinic acid. It doesn't matter as long as you remember that it is found in or surrounding the endospore or the chemical component surrounding the endospore. All right, examples of medically important bacteria that are spore formers. There are only two. 
please don't forget them because they are considered in the they are again going to be asked in the board exam can you give me an example one example only francis because you like to flex your medical microbiology knowledge by completing the answer earlier what what organism or bacterial organism is capable of producing a spore try to challenge yourself without looking at the slide next slide clostridium wonderful thank you so much another one another one um, let's try asking one of the ladies so uh, so that we have equality in this class um, let's try with rona lisa Ronaliza. Ronaliza oh, Lisa is not around. All right. Let's try find looking for another girl. Uh, what about Cherise? Cherise? Not there also. Hmm. Cherise, are you there? You can start, you can type, it doesn't matter. Give me an organism or give me a bacterial organism or that is a spore former. Bacillus. Thank you, Charisse. Wonderful. Well, these are the organisms that you're going to talk about. We actually have different locations. Describe the location of the spore. That's why I added. Uh, that's why I added the second bullet. For Clostridium species, it's actually the, oh, it's actually terminal, except for Clostridium tetani, which is subterminal. And this is my drawing. For the, don't forget. Uh, Bacillus has a central spore, while Clostridium species, they have terminal spores, except for Clostridium tetani. Alright? Tetani is also, no Clostridium tetani is also known as what? Just uh, review, advance review. Clostridium tetani is the causative agent of what? It's important for what? From the name itself, guys. Tetanus, right. And what is the... And what is the drug, the, the therapeutic agent that we use to counteract the effects of the tetanus to toxin? Anti-tetanus. Or what? It's not anti-tetanus. It's actually, yeah, it's anti-tetanus. Uh, it's known colloquially as anti-tetanus. But what is the specific term? Ay, benzodiazepine. Nakakaloka, nakakaloka Right, Francis. Francis. Hindi ba? Ay, sa kita. Bibigyan ng anti, anti-depressant ang benzodiazepine, di ba? Nakakaloka ka, Francis. Penicillin. No, no. Anti-tetanus is, is commonly known as what? <laughs> Naloka ako. Oh, binigyan ng anti-parasitic. Ah, yan ang ba sinasabi natin. Eh. This might be asked in the exams uh, in serology, immunology and serology. What's TIG? Ah, yeah, somebody already answered. Alright, it's actually tetanus toxoid. Alright? Naloka ako, penicillin. Kayo talaga, kayo talaga ha? Minsan napapatagalog ako sa inyo. Well, Agad-agad na naka-ano naka, pa tayo, naka-English ang ating format. Tapos bigla niyong, biglang lumalabas yung strong Ilongga accent ko. Kahit hindi ako Ilongga. <laughs> Nakakaloka talaga kayo ha. Alright, examples of states used to demonstrate endospores. Please don't forget these three. They're the only one, uh, based on my research, these are the only ones that are commonly asked. Okay, so we have Wason stain, we have white stain. Conic, conkin, wet conkin, and <coughs> sorry, what with Ritz conkins and Dorner stain. So the Schaefer Fulton or the Schaefer stain doesn't matter. We, we want to give uh, we want to give a little bit of a shout out for Fulton, but uh, in some books they just call him Schaefer stain, and then Ritz conkin and Dorner stain. Um, no experience, no idea why why it's I it's asked if it's asked in the board exam, but it's just there for you guys to remember. Lagay na lang, ikaw nga dun sa board exam namin. Lagay lang ng lagay anyway. Hindi naman ako mag-aaral niyan, di ba? Eh, anyway, alright, let's go. Indicate the reaction of endospores to stains with each method. Well, for <clears throat> for which Ritz, Ritz Konkin and 
Schaefer Fulton, the color of the spores would be green. Whilst for Dorner stain, it would be red. Yes, it's red. Okay? So again, lagay lang ng lagay, hindi na naman ako nag-aaral niyan. Alright, what structures may be found in the external cell wall of bacteria? Well, let's talk about them in broadly, in a much more, uh, in a much more understandable or digestible way. So the glycocalyx would be on top. Actually, I put it here on top. But unfortunately, when I was editing the slide, just imagine the glycocalyx. Wait. Let me try to correct this one. Let's try. Let's try to correct this one. Uh -huh, yeah. So, it's supposed to be like this. Okay? Yeah. Okay. Yun lang, nung pinaltan ko yung design ng ano, ng slides, na move pala siya. Alright, so glycocalyx it could either have capsule or a slime layer. Capsule, latent organisms, again, just another review. What are the three organisms or bacteria that have capsules? Bacteria, bacteria. What are the three organisms that have capsules? I will type it. You can Type with me, Haemophilus influenzae, Neisseria meningitidis, and Streptococcus pneumoniae. pneumoniae. Alright? So please don't forget those three organisms that have the capsule. If they don't have a capsule, most probably they would just have a slime layer, which could be composed of decoic acid or any other form of acid that we talked about in the previous discussion. All right, what is the function of the capsule in the pathogenicity of bacteria? Again, this is the one that prevents the organism from being phagocytized. All right, from being phagocytized. We've already asked this question. We've already asked this question. I'm just repeating it again and again. All right. Now, three general methods of demonstrating bacterial capsules. This is what I promised earlier. So we can demonstrate them by either staining or allowing them to grow in the agar. And particularly, we grow them in a milk medium. Surprisingly enough, they are, they are grown in a milk media. All right? And the other thing that, can, can we, that we can use, we can use a stain. We can also use antibody or antigenic serotyping. All right? These are the three things. You can either culture the organism if you want to if you want to see if it's if it's capable of producing bacteria uh, bacterial capsules, or you can stain the capsules directly. Or if you're if you're very lazy like me, I would opt to go for serotyping. All right. All right. So bacterial bacterial capsules, since we're talking about stains, can be stained with what? They can be stained by two methods. They can we can use the his staining method and nigrosin India ink stain. But again, nigrosin and eosin is a stain that we use for <coughs> nigrosin nigrosin India ink rather. Nigrosin India ink is used for more on the fungal uh, fungal elements, specifically Cryptococcus neoformans. All right. Another term for nigrosin and India ink stain is known as your background stain. It is also known as a relief stain. Relief, yes. But ang, ang stain kasi natin is yung background, so we're giving relief to the bacteria, or rather to the organism. Hence the term relief stain. All right. Now, indicate the reagents used for his staining method. This one in order. O, diba demanding na din ang mga slide ko. Demanding na din siya. Gusto niya in order. So we're going to start with gentian violet, then we start with basic fuchsia, and then last is the copper sulfate washing technique. All right. So this is the wa this is the staining method in order when you're doing the his staining method. All right. Is that okay? Everybody is fine. Everybody is following. All right. Because please remember some of these because these things will be asked in the board exam. Specifically, the process of staining his using the his method. Usually, they will ask the his staining method is used for what? Oh, diba? 
or they will ask which of the following methods which of the following is the correct order for staining a capsule oh, using the his method so these are some of the ways they will ask it in the board exam please try to be mindful put a star on this one don't forget all right now antigenic serotyping of um antigenic serotyping technique to demonstrate the presence of a capsule in some bacteria. This is known as what you call the Keylong test. Keylong. Or what you call the Neufeld Keylong test. I will try to write it on the chat. Neufeld Neufeld Keylong test. Okay? The Neufeld Keylong test. Because I, I think when I was still a, young, a youngster back then, when I'm not that old as I am right now, I think I wrote Keylong. Yeah. So the positive result is capsular swelling. There was actually a picture here. I don't know where it went. Maybe when I changed the, de the design, it got covered or got deleted. But yeah. So the Keylong stain or the Neufeld Keylong stain. All right. That's the, that's the, st that's the serotyping technique. That's basically the general serotyping technique or known as the capsular swelling method if for some of you guys who want to be much more specific or much more scientific. Now, the slime layer is observed in what species of Staphylococcus? Since we're talking about bacterial, uh, bacterial components, we want to talk about the slime layer. It's actually seen in Staphylococcus epidermidis. All right? And one way to differentiate Staphylococcus epidermidis from Staphylococcus aureus is through what test? Anybody? Anybody? One way to differentiate Staph epidermidis from Staph, Staph aureus. Anybody? Nobody? Okay, I will give you guys three choices. Gram stain, coagulase stain, I coagulase stain, sorry, coagulase, coagulase test, test. Or catalase test. What test among the choices that I've I've um, I've presented to you guys is the test that is used for the presumptive diagnosis of staph aureus from other staph species? Somebody answered coagulase. Okay. What about the others? What will be your choices? This is not your. I'm not asking for your opinion. I am asking for a fact. So there is going to be a correct answer. All right, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So people are, yeah, nobody will contest. Nobody will contest the group. Nobody? Nobody? No, ayoko. In my opinion, I want optogen test. Diba ginanon, no? In my opinion, sir, it is catalase test. Walang ganon. I would like to speak to your supervisor, sir. Ganon. No? Wala talaga lahat? Well, congratulations to everybody because everybody answered correctly. It's actually coagulase test. Okay? Actually, Staphylococcus epidermidis falls under the category of coagulase negative staph species that are of medical importance. And another way, to dif another organism that might be confused with, uh, that needs to be differentiated with staph epidermidis is Staphylococcus saprophyticus. Alright? So please don't forget that. That will be, again, an important question once we move on to the specific organisms. Alright? Capsules in some bacteria is also synonymous to what antigens? The K antigen. Capsule nga eh. K antigen. Also, in Salmonella species, is also known as the VI antigen. So please don't forget the antigenic names for a capsule, all right? Some organisms are capsulated, especially Salmonella typhi. But in, that ca in this case, Salmonella thrives in our gut or are in our, uh, what? In our, what? Intestinal tract, all right? So in this case, it's just K antigen, capsular antigen, VI antigen in, the, in Salmonella typhi. So please don't forget the other names. Or the uh, the antigenic names for the capsules. All right, because it might be important, especially when we talk about the specific organisms. All right, based on function, what are the two types of pili? Pili. 
uh, uh, P-life structures in bacteria. There are two types of P-life. Okay, the other, the first one is the ordinary P-life that is used for adhering to cells, and the other one is for sex P-life, particularly for bacterial conjugation. We have sex P-life, of course. Some organisms or some bacteria have what you call the reproductive P-life, and they can they need to have syngamy in order for them to reproduce. All right. Now, stains used for demonstrating bacterial flagella. Um, I think I mentioned it already, but it's I don't know. I haven't mentioned it already. Well, you have what you call the leaf soot stain, the gray stain, and the Escher corn stain. And particular component of each, uh, the particular component that is that's common in each test, uh, they have the same one is what you call the, mara, uh, <coughs> sorry, the tarmic acid rather, moriamic acid tuloy, tarmic acid. Okay. Okay pa ang audio? Okay pa ang live, Adrian? Okay pa? Ang, audio, ang live, then, okay, wonderful. Alright. May aso pa. I love it. I love, I love the dogs. Alright. By the way, Adrian, what's your dog? What's the species of your dog now? Charig! Ay, wonderful. I love chow chows. Oh my god. Rich to si Adrian. Yeah. Reach to see Adrian because it's very, it's very difficult to, it's difficult to take care of the, of these types of, uh, these species of, uh, of dogs. So yeah, I can tell that um, um, Adrian is well off. All right. Now, what are the types of bacterial flagella? My gosh, sir, kailangan pa nating alamin yan. Of course, you need to have, you need to remember these six types of bacteria, uh, bacterial flagella. Atricus flagella, they don't have flagella, of course. Monotricus, one pole. Amphitricus, both poles has, both poles have uh, flagella. Lopotricus, the po one pole is consisting a tuft of back of flagella. I'll try to draw it here. This is, oops. Lopotricus is like this. So there's a, this is your bacterial wall, cell wall, and then one pole has a tuft of bacteria. It's like it's like pom poms in the Philippines, You're the one that they put on cheerleaders' hands. All right, peritricus flagella all over the all over the bacterial cell wall. All right, all over the bacterial cell wall, and what you call the periflax, periplasmic flagella or axial flagella. It's you, it's seen in your spirochetes. What does a uh, periplasmic flagella look like? A spirochete looks like a spiral, of course, right, from the name itself. Axial flagella looks like this. On the axes of a, of the organism, they have um, on the opposite axis of the organism, you will see a flagella. So that's what it means by axial flagella. All right. Now, what is the function of flagella? Of course, it's used for motility or movement. This test is best observed at what temperature? It's best observed at room temperature because at uh, body temperature, the flagella the flagella starts to disintegrate. Hence, when we get uh, at higher temperatures, uh, higher than body temperature, especially in patients with hyper hyperthermia or fever, if you want to be much more specific, um, if you want to be, if you want me to be much more less posh, um, the 25 degrees Celsius is suitable for demonstrating the movement of the microorganisms. Now, when it gets higher, specifically for some organisms, the movement declines because these are the, the flagella is broken down by the body. All right, except for the cases of Helicobacter pylori and Campylobacter, py Campylobacter. All right, but we'll talk about them later on. All right, so um, at 37 degrees Celsius, of some organisms are inhibited. What are examples of, or, of organisms that are inhibited at uh, the at 37 degrees Celsius? Please don't forget the cold loving organisms of course we have your Yersinia pestis and Listeria monocytogenes please don't forget them they are the, the only ones that we will talk about that are cold loving okay these two please put a star on these on this slide they are cold loving okay now peritricus flagella is observed in all species of the enterobacteriaceae family except for Klebsiella Klebsiella is actually um, a, Atricus. 
um, pitigrosula ay atypicus. Alright? What type of flagella is observed in Vibrio? It's actually monotricus. Hence the, hence the darting motility. They have, they have monotricus flagella. Alright? So, I tried to do, do an artwork for you guys, but unfortunately, it looks, it look like, it looks like a mess. Alright? Monotricus flagella. And in the examples of tests for motility, we can use the hanging drop method just to observe if the organisms are moving in the culture, directly from the culture. We can also stain the flagellum using leaf soon stain. Let's go back to the types of stain. Leaf soon stain, um, gray stain, and azure corn, all of which have tarmic acid. All right? Uh-huh. Pereticus flagella, all enterobacteria you have. Pereticus flagella, yeah. Vibrio has um, monotricus, yeah, we've already answered that one. Test for motility, so yeah. So we have hanging drop method or the direct motility method, measurement, the, the direct motility, motility test. Okay? And then last is staining the flagella or using a semi solid medium, growth in a semi solid medium. Okay? We'll talk about the specific semi-solid medium later on. Alright. So describe the motility of the following organisms. Why do I need to remember why do I why do you guys need to remember this? Because it was asked either in the famine quiz show, uh, if some of you will be participating. Or it was also asked in the board exam for some of my friends. So I completed uh, it was completed by a review center in the Philippines. I don't take full credit of this one. This was given by Axe Review Center for your information. So I don't take full credit on this one. Like Listeria monocytogenes is seen in McBride medium having tumbling motility. Capnocytophaga is Capnocytophagia is is characterized as having a gliding motility and Campylobacter uh, Campylobacter is have a escape or is characterized as having darting motility. All right? Now, what is the most common media used to test, used to test, um, used to test bacterial motility? We have what you call sulfo, uh, sulfide indole motility test, which is a, which is a semi-solid medium. All right, semi-solid. Why do we need it to be semi-solid? We want the organisms to move. In an agar, in a solid agar medium, it, they won't be able to. They won't. They won't have much room to move because of the molecules that interferes with their movement. So a semi-solid medium would be much more suitable. So SIM medium, if you're familiar, or you can use the complete one if you want to be like uh, Francis who wants to flex his medical technology knowledge to us. You can use sulfide indole motility medium. All right. Next, differentiate pathogenicity and virulence. Um, we're gonna stop here, and I'd like uh, I would like to request a 15-minute break from um, I'd like to request a 15-minute break from the class if it's possible. Just a sip of water. Is it okay with everybody? Oh, enjoy your lunch. <laughs> I had a I. <laughs> Ang sweet naman ng mga students. Tsaka ni Sir Marco. Thank you so much. Alright. So we will stop here. And hopefully somebody will be able to answer the question that I posed yesterday, last uh, couple of minutes ago. What is the di major difference between eukaryotic and prokaryotic? Okay, this is my question. That I will post to the class before, after, uh, after which we will talk about it later on. Alright?
hello <clears throat> hello hello ay napaka napaka ano napaka warm ng welcome naman ng mga students i love it very very sort of energetic not as energetic as earlier but it's okay <laughs> all right hello ana jamema hello all right um Okay, so who was able to answer? Who can give me, who would be the class representative in explaining to me what is the difference between a prokaryotic and a eukaryotic organism? Who will, who will represent the class? Ay, taray, oh, Francis Alipio. All right, sure. Let's go. Uh huh. Okay. All right. Wonderful. What about from other people? That is correct. Thank you so much. Tara, may GoPro pa, oh. May GoPro. Ang lakas makalalaki. Go, lakas makalalaki. <laughs> GoPro. All right. Who else? What about from the ladies' side? Siyempre, ano. Siyempre, ayaw akong natatalo ang mga ladies. Very, ano, very, um, uh, what they call this? Very equal tayo dito. We, we want to have equal opportunities for the for both boys and girls, or even the LGBT community. If you don't, if you guys have some members. All right, we'll go with Joanna first before Cherise. Joanna, okay. All right, wonderful. Now, what about Charisse? Charisse, you are raising your hand. Do you want to contest or do you want to accept their claims? Or, okay, sure. Uh huh. Oh, ano na, ano naman, ano naman. Okay, ano? Sorry, sorry. Nakat, nakat. Sorry again, please. Uh huh. Wonderful. Okay. Wonderful. Thank you so much, boys. Unequal. Mas may yung magaling ang mga girls natin. Walang ba? Walang walang gusto magcontest. Walang gusto mag. Ayoko ko. In my opinion, walang gaganon. Puro girls lang sa mga to. We girl power talaga tayo. May isa pang may, may gusto pang humabul na isa. Si Noyon. Si Noreen. All right, Noreen. You have the mic. Okay, sige. Uh huh. Uh huh. Uh huh. All right. Wonderful, Odiva. Very, very concise ang kanyang ang kanyang explanation, and I loved it. And it sounds like it was copy and pasted from some some uh some literary uh, literary source, but I loved it nonetheless. All right. Okay, so apparently, women power is women. Women's pa women's uh, power is strong in this class. I love it. Okay, thank you, for sa notes, po, sir. Ah, the ba wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. I love it. I I love the 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 participation that I'm receiving from you guys. All right, now let's move on to pathogenicity versus virulence. I'd like you guys to please take note of the difference between these two because according to the BOC certificate, uh, BOC or the ASTP question banks, they, there's one question there about pathogenicity and virulence. It, it's, it's, um, if, I, if I could re recall correctly, it was, what is the difference between pathogenicity from virulence? All right, so let's try, let's try with somebody from the group who can answer for us. Noreen again. All right, wonderful. Noreen. Oh, sige lang. Try lang ng try habang kumakain ako ng pagkain.
So yeah, sorry, I was speaking with the mic off. <laughs> sorry. Okay, so this is the difference. Thank you, Noreen. You gave me a satisfactory answer. It was actually very good, not just satisfactory. Pathogenicity is the ability of an organism to cause a disease, while virulence is the degree of pathogenicity or the degree or rather the severity of the disease an organism can cause. Can cause, not past tense, can cause. All right. Now, general examples of pathogenic determinants. We have pathogenic determinants. When you you will you will you will recall this uh, this particular slide later on when we talk about the specific organisms. But these are just examples of some of the things that you might encounter in the board exam. Um, adherence factors such as the filae, specifically for your Neisseria gonorrhea or Neisseria meningitis. All right, antiphagocytic factors such as the M protein and mycolic acid. Mycolic acid is found in Mycobacterium tuberculosis and protein in stre stre um, Streptococcus species. Enzymes can also cause can also contribute to the pathogenicity of an organism as well as toxins. Examples of organisms that produce toxins: Clostridium botulinum, Clostridium tetani, Bacillus anthracis. So those are the organisms that are toxin producing. Let's not forget also about some of the members, a lot of the members rather, of uh, family Enterobacteria Shea. But that is a general topic. But that's just a general, a general uh, summation of what we're going to talk about later on. Now, there are two types of toxins released by bacteria. Can you please help me out here? Somebody from the chat. Maybe Adrian can help me or maybe Rainiel can help me because, all right. All right, so what are the two types of toxins that are released by bacteria? Oh, si ma sabi ni mother, sagutin mo daw. Uh-huh. All right, okay, thank you. Narinig ko si mother, sagutin mo yan. Gumanon si mother, narinig ko. <laughs> ah, okay, akala ko, akala ko nasa likod mo. All right, I thought he was, she was behind you. Oh my gosh, shout out to mother. All right. So differentiate it based on the source of, based on the source. We're looking at whether or not it's a gram-positive organism or gram-negative organism. We already know that gram-positive organisms produce what exotoxins. All right, exotoxins and endotoxins for gram-positive. Uh, sorry, exotoxins are produced by either gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria, while endotoxins is specific for gram-negative organisms. Remember, earlier in our discussion, the endotoxic portion of the gram-negative organism is its actual cell wall. Remember? So please don't forget that. Now, exotoxins can be produced by either gram-negative or gram-positive bacteria. Now, that will be that will be a discussion on in it by itself when we go on to the specific microorganisms. But right now, our next topic is the difference the different types of uh, bacterial toxins based on molecular composition. Exotoxins are more of the protein type than, and then um, on, the, on the flip side, we have endotoxins. Endotoxins are more of lipid based or hence we call it lipid A layer. All right, so protein based. So from the, uh, from the, under, from our understanding, based on our understanding, which of the following would most likely be, uh, would most likely have an, effic an efficacious effect with vaccines? Which one do you think would have an efficacious effect when an organism or rather a toxin is vaccinated or, or uh, a host is vaccinated towards a toxin? Which toxin will have an efficacious effect? Endotoxin or exotoxin? Write it on the chat. And I want to see whilst I'm eating my food. All right, somebody said exotoxin, somebody said endotoxin, somebody said exotoxin, and then, okay, who else? There's 16 people in the chat, and only five people have already have entered in their answers. Want to see more? Right, 
Wonderful. Okay, so a lot of people answered exotoxins. Only one person answered endotoxin. I would like to ask Mayra. Mayra, can you please unmute yourself? We'd like to have a one-on-one -on -one talk with each other. I'd like you to go. All right. Why do you, why did you say endotoxin would um, benefit? Would uh, patients who have endotoxins in their system would benefit from a vaccine? Just curious. I hindi mo lang sure. All right. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. Wonderful. Okay. So yeah, she has the research, but she might be th thinking of something in the within the lines of lipoproteins, lipo yeah, so lipoproteins. Now remember, if you're going to talk, if you're going to go back to your theor theoretical immunology and serology, which which one would have much more uh would have a much more antigenic effect? A protein or a lipid? Mera. Mera, Mera. Which one would have an? What? Which one would react more? Uh, would be recognized more as an antigen, a protein or a lipid? Okay. So, with that regard, I'm sorry to tell you. I'm sorry to tell you that your answer is incorrect. However, I do appreciate the. I do appreciate your. Uh, tenacity in trying to contest or trying to prove the other people wrong. All right, let us. The that is the that is our way of um, med, medio Socratic tayo dito, no? I'm trying to look at other people's. I uh, know, although although science based. Uh, this is a science based um, course. We're trying to we're trying to get uh, people's feedback, and in such a way that we're trying to correct some of the mistakes that some students are making. All right, so exotoxins. Right, an example of an exotoxin is your clostrid, uh, clostridium tetany. Clostridium tetany. The reason why I asked it is because you have an anti-tetanus toxoid vaccine, which is given after exposure to the toxin. What does it do? It neutralizes the tetanus toxins or the tetanus toxins. All right, clear? Can we move on? All right, thank you. Mayra, is it clear for you now? Okay. All right, wonderful, wonderful. Now, dif the, differentiate the release mechanisms of exotoxins from endotoxins. Now, an exotoxin is released by the as a metabolic product of the organism, whilst a exotoxin is released upon the destruction of the cell wall. All right, or the dis disintegration. Or, if you want to be much more posh, we want to um, disintegration of the phagocyte via phagocytosis we want to sound posh all right now bacterial toxin type is heat labile um, uh, which bacterial toxin type is heat labile and which one is heat stable now again we're going back to the molecular basis of each therefore an exotoxin is much more labile while an endotoxin is much more stable so that's the reason why some cases of tetanus could be self-limiting, depending on the amount of of uh, could depending on the amount of microorganisms that microorganisms that are in, that are present in the patient's body. All right. So maybe some of you have already have already guessed that ah, oh, sir, nasugat ako ng isang araw. Medyo kalawangin yung ano, kalawangin yung nakatusok sa akin na tamdak. Pero hindi naman ako nag-suffer ng rhizus sardonicus and everything after a couple of weeks. That's the reason why. You probably had fever, and then the fever had all, have maybe destroyed most of the organisms or maybe destroyed the clostridium tetany in the system before it can be, before it can reproduce and replicate itself to a much more pathogen. So a much more pathogenic or clinically recognized presentation. So, yun lang. Some people are not able to do it. Not every patient are this is the same. So please be mindful of that one, in case you might encounter it as a case presentation in the exam. Remember, as I mentioned before, time and time and time again, the board examiners don't really have don't really have a a distinguishing factor whether or not we are pathologists 
or medical technologists. They seem to be confused because they still present, even up till now, they still present us with, with case presentations. So please be mindful of some of the things that I'm saying here in my lecture because it might be helpful for you in the future when you're going to take the exams. All right? Now, among all bacterial exotoxins, which of the following is not heat labile? Of course, we, you will remember staphyloenterotoxin. It actually becomes much more potent when the patient has a fever. All right? We will go into that when we discuss the staphyloenterotoxin or staphylococcus aureus in general. All right? Based on immunologic characteristic, differentiate exotoxins for and uh, uh, different exoto differentiate exotoxins from endotoxins. That is going to be the same thing that we discussed earlier. Exotoxins are much more, much more antigenic and therefore can be neutralized by antitoxins. Exotoxins are less antigenic, therefore it cannot be or it takes a long time for them to be recognized as antigen uh, can be re before they can be affected by an antigenic immune response or as um, antibody Im mediated immune response. All right. So based on pharmacologic effect, what is the difference between an exotoxin bacterial exotoxin? Describe each. Well, we could have three types of exotoxins. We have either we could have a cytotoxin, we could have an enterotoxin, and we could also have a neurotoxin. All right. Neurotoxin. So let's start first with the cytotoxin. A cytotoxin, based on the name itself, it is toxic to the cell. Cyto is cell. An enterotoxin, it damages cells of the gastrointestinal tract. So you can see it in patients who are suffering from, who are suffering from diarrhea and uh, malabsorption syndromes, blah blah blah. All right. Neurotoxins, on the other hand, as opposed to the other ones, they are toxic. To the nerve tissue, to the nerve tissue or nervous nervous cells of the nervous system, because they interfere with the transmission and impulse. Now I will not go back to the the physiology physiology part, but let's let's just try to remember that the myelin sheet, which the myelin sheet, which is which is seen in many neuro neu, neurological uh neurolog, neuro, neuronal cells, would connect each. Neural uh, would be would have a neural connection with each other, and these axons serve like these axons serves serves as um, serves as a connection between 